All right, so where the heck are we at with this project? Three months and no new updates on it. What is going on, Greg? This Style 7 Big Ben series has been interesting. The clock itself was simple enough to work on, but uh, I think <laughs> I think my own uh, error in cleaning, anyway, really kind of slowed this down. This, uh, this movement... I, re I think one of the last parts I released on it before, I or no, it wasn't one of the last parts. It was the, sorry, I don't know what the heck I'm saying, guys. The the part with the simple green, the cleaning part, where I cleaned this, yeah, that's actually kind of a bad method to do it with. Uh, simply because simple green discolors parts and also doesn't do a very good job. It does a good job on most things, but simple green, it just does an okay job. And, as I said, stuff gets discolored. Uh, using Spray 9, Spray 9 doesn't do a good job of cleaning movements. I don't want to use it anymore. And, I, if, if you guys have been following my community post, you'll, you'll know that this, that this video was coming, that I was going to do another part of the Style 7 Big Ben. So, what I've done is, I've totally just taken everything apart. Oh, and, uh... By the way, for those of you who forgot, or whatever, or maybe I didn't mention it now, I don't know. Uh, the clock didn't actually want to run with the original balance wheel in it. <laughs> and, uh, yes, yeah, so that's not good. And when I replaced the balance wheel, it ran too fast. So what could be the problem? Well, for those of you I've talked to in private, you know where this is going. Today, guys, we're going we're gonna to play around with pivot polishing. Uh, yep, you heard that right. We're going to be polishing this uh, this cup bearing. I almost forgot the name of it there for a second. I've called these, whoops, I've, I've called these the balance cups on many occasion. Um, I think cup bearing is actually the proper name, but anyway, we're going to be polishing that guy. But, oh, look at this guy. It doesn't come out. It's permanently in there. Well, we're going to polish him too. Oh, yeah, and that's just in there. This cup bearing is just in there just for the convenience of it. And we're going to be polishing both ends of this balance wheel. This is the original balance wheel for this clock. We're going to be polishing that. And as you can see, I've taken everything apart again. Uh, and I've cleaned it again, too. Partly because this is a pain in the neck to access when it's together. So, yeah, I just pulled everything apart again. Yeah, I cleaned everything again, but with what? As I said, if you've been following my great community posts, you'll know that I'm experimenting around with new cleaners. Right now, I'm going to try Zep, Industrial Purple Degreaser. And for those of you who actually know what this is, then you probably know that there's a label on the back saying, do not use brass, or do not use with brass. <laughs> well, in one way or another, uh, what happened with this was I somehow, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know how this happened, but I ended up uh, not reading that in one way or another. I thought I did, but apparently I didn't. It must have been one of Zep's other products that I read the back of the bottle for. And somehow I ended up using this on brass and it actually turned out really well. So this has to be acidic. This is probably acidic in one way or another. And uh, what I've been doing is the modern cleaning solution today. I mean, this might change tomorrow. You hit, like, uh, as you can see, guys, I can't stay on one cleaning solution very long. Uh, you know, I, I keep jumping around. Um, this, this thing, what I end up doing, I don't even use the ultrasonic cleaner anymore. Not that I'm going to sell it, but really the ultrasonic has no purpose in this. I just use my bin that I've been using uh, for simple green and all that stuff. Why is there a wheel still in there? Apparently, I can't stay on topic for more than 10 seconds either. Don't worry, I'll go back and, and reiterate some of this stuff. Okay, uh, I cleaned this stuff yesterday, and I forgot the escape wheel in there overnight. That that has been in the zip. That's right, the stuff that is supposed to damage brass, it has been in the zip all night at least. So that's probably around, uh, that's probably around like 6 or 7 p.m. last night till right now. <laughs> I don't do this stuff deliberately, guys. 
I don't know how the heck I forgot that, but yeah. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, the point I was trying to kind of make was even though it says that on the back of the bottle, even though it says, you know, may or do not use on uh, alu painted surfaces, aluminum, brass, chrome, copper, marble, slate grit. So yeah, there's all those. And, al and other alkaline surfaces. So I guess brass is an alkaline surface. Uh, and other alkaline, oh, alkaline sensitive surfaces as damage may occur, not damage will occur, may occur. I haven't seen any of that damage yet, really. And as you can see, that stayed in there all night. And it was brass. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's not quite dry yet. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, as you may or may not have seen on that, it said, "Do not let, uh, do not let the zip dry on whatever you're cleaning." You know, you got to rinse it off. So I just stick these parts in a small container of water and then give them a blast with the hair dryer. <laughs> So that, that aspect of my cleaning has not changed. So to reiterate all that insanity, Spray 9 slash Simple Green kind of sucks for cleaning movements. Uh, Spray 9 works really well for cleaning hairsprings though. So I'm going to keep this container in service with Spray 9 in it. That's for my hairsprings. And Simple Green I'm just not even going to use on this stuff. Uh, maybe use it for cases, but other than that, I'm not going to use it for movements. Spray 9, not using for movements because it just does, It just seems to make more of a mess than anything else. And that's kind of uh, also why the Big Ben Style 1A series got put on hold or stopped. That clock runs now, by the way, but for the longest time, I couldn't get it to run for some reason. Now it wants to run, so I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I don't know. They, those two give a kind of a crap job. Zep seems to work really well. Um, I think that's all just, what is that? Is that dirt? Actually, we can pick at that stuff with a toothpick and I'll kind of show you what's cooking on those plates. So yeah, Spray 9 is okay. Simple Green is pretty bad. Zep seems to work really well. And uh, the pivots on this movement are dull, pretty sure. So... Today we're gonna, once I'm done with all this nonsense, we're gonna get polishing pivots here. Cause that's what we need to do next. So does any of that wanna come off? Oh, and by the way, um, oh yeah, that bushing's worn, but I don't have the stuff to deal with that yet. I'm just gonna leave it. Is anything coming off on there? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, when you're getting into this stuff, you know, this is what happens. This is the type of nonsense that transpires. I can't believe I forgot that escape wheel in there overnight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leave it to university and papers and... Oh, my mind is in a million different places. Said papers are completed, though, now, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, like this... As you, Well, I'm not trying that hard, but as you can see, this is mostly okay. I, I see there's a bit of a... I don't know what you'd call that. All of this was here before, um, and it's not coming off. Obviously, it's not perfectly, you know, oh, it looks like it's brand new, but it's definitely okay. I think I can use it like that. And is that dirt on there? That might be dirt. I don't know. I can't tell. There might be a little bit more scrubbing on this plate, like areas like that. I'm not thrilled with that stuff. But for the most part, all the oil and all the dirt and all that stuff is off of these gears and wheels. So that's terrific. So Zep seems to rule the day right now versus Spray 9, Simple Green, or anything else at the moment. And you guys, uh, when I posted that community post, I got some good responses there, some actual cleaning formula recipes that I might take you up on if need should arise if the need should arise but i want to play around with zep more i'm really gung-ho on trying to find a cleaning solution that i can buy locally and not not have to go through international shipping and stuff like that you know i i really don't want to pay 70 dollars for one bottle of something so i'd much rather try and experiment 
with stuff like this. And, and as you can see, I bought a spray bottle, so this is like a sample of it. And from right now, I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with Zep. Granted, I was pretty impressed with Simple Green, but this seems to work really well for the most part. So I'm going to stick with that for now, or I'm, I'm going to probably test it a little more, but for right now, I'm pretty impressed with Zep. So yeah, that's Zep. Um, that this, this perspective of mine that I have may or may not change. And, uh, yeah, so the point is what we're actually doing is we're going to polish these pivots here. Uh, we're going to polish everything almost, uh, all these wheels, the actual pivot wire on there is rough feeling kind of to your fingernail. You can test it with your nail. This is good. I already polished this one, but yeah, if you take your nail and kind of go, let's pretend that this is a, this is a steel arbor. If you go like that, you can feel with your fingernail if the surface is rough or not. Let's just see if sitting in here overnight made this rougher or something. It's hard to hold the camera and do this. Uh, no, nope. feels pretty good. You know, some wheels are rougher than others. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Some wheels are rougher than others. So, yeah. So, let's get pivot polishing, shall we? Oh, wait. Um... We need to build something first. So for a bit of backstory, for those of you who had no idea what I was doing because I didn't make these public videos, I was kind of testing uh, using my Dremel as a pivot polishing machine. Basically as a small lathe, really. And the results were pretty good. I had to turn the Dremel speed up, like basically to there. But I got a Cullet extension set off of Amazon and I was able to mount train wheels in here. And lo and behold, using Dremel, using the Dremel compound, which is over there under that blue lid, mixing it up with oil and putting it on a toothpick, I was able to polish wheels successfully. So that's terrific. But I'm not gonna be using my Dremel anymore for that because I don't like how gears are spinning at 10,000 RPM or whatever. And if, if the arbor, or if something snaps, which we don't want it to, but if something breaks, it's going to go flying at me or it's going to go flying across the room. It's going to like, you know, stick into the wall or something. It's moving fast and there's not enough time to react and to get out of the way if need be. So this is good, but it's not, it, I don't know how really safe that is. And especially after trying to polish this wheel in particular here, uh, you know, since uh, wheels like this are hard to, are well are hard to polish at least this side here see with this other side we've got all that room there to stick it into the chuck of the dremel on this side all we have is the pivot wire to stick into the chuck if you if you have a dremel or whatever you'll know what i'm kind of talking about but if i were to do this differently if i were to take a pin vise stick it on there see this this is kind of like a pin these chucks are kind of like pin vices but not really um, if I were to take a pin vise, have it mounted, have the wheel mounted in the pin vise, and then put it in my, in my uh, drill press chuck, why couldn't I just polish pivots like this? And even better, uh, I want to build a safety protector thing here out of this plastic container. We can have the table lifted up, and we can basically have a hole drilled in here, have this sitting on there, have the wheel mostly in here, have the wheel and the pin vise in this thing. And then it would actually be under this table where the wheel would be sticking through and it could polish it, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I'm gonna see what I can cook up there. Maybe it'd just be smarter to have it here. I, I'm not sure. Maybe some wooden blocks or something. Uh, I could rig something up. This table is gonna, would have to be higher, but yeah. This, this Ryobi drill press is entirely capable of polishing pivots at least i think it is because you can go like 900 like it's set to 930 rpm right now you can go faster than that i've polished uh in fact that's how i've been polishing stuff like this i wasn't using the dremel to polish this i was just mounting a toothpick in my pin vise sticking in the chuck and then just basically drilling into it with a toothpick with polishing compound on it very simplistic method, very cheap method, and I like it. So yeah, I've already been doing that with these, but for wheels like this, you know, 
I think it'd be better to at least have it in a pin vise in this. Mounting anything else in the Dremel chuck, aside from the actual Dremel, you know, official cutters and stuff like that, and even the, even like the knockoff Dremel, I don't, I don't know who actually invented this. I think, I think Dremel is its own, I don't know, I don't know the history of the Dremel or how these little attachments came, uh, came to be. But I do know that there are tons of brands you can buy that are not Dremel, which have the same exact stuff. I have no idea, like, if any of that breaks in your face or whatever, who, who will help you or who will cover your, uh, if you're in the United States, your, your medical bills or whatever. But anyway, the point, the point I'm getting at is I don't want to get into trouble in case mounting a gear wheel in here goes horribly wrong and, uh, it flies off and, and sticks in my head or something, <laughs> you know, you know, I don't, this, this, this method it works okay, but it's not the safest, so I think at least having this plastic container with my drill press would be safer and, you know, less risky. So after so after playing around with stuff for a while, I cut this jar in half using my Dremel, and I've got, uh, well, I've got the depth gauge set on this drill press, so that pivot goes right through that hole there, and I can polish it through there. And I've got a Ryobi light here, so I can see what is going on. And I think it'll all be hunky-dory in one way or another. Too bad there wasn't a way to lock this handle in one place. Like, this thing is always wanting to go back up. But, I don't know, maybe there's a way to lock it. Does anyone know? I see that bolt there is turning. I don't know, I don't want to dismantle this drill press when there's no, there's no reason to. I don't know, but I, I'd like to lock this in one spot, but I don't know if that's possible with one of these. Maybe there's some way you can modify it, but do I really want to be playing around with that? Not really. I know my top here, this top is uncovered, but this is still better than, than nothing, you know what I mean? Something spinning at 2,000 RPM or whatever, you want some kind of... You want some kind of protective element there. Actually, maybe this could be lifted up almost. Hmm, this might not have to be locked in place after all. Hang on. Okay, so after playing around with stuff for a while, I came up with this. So I've taken that jar, that plastic jar. It's a craft peanut butter container. I've taken that, I've cut the bottom off, and I've also taken a chunk out of this lid and also out of the jar itself. Um, as you can see, that's just screwed on there. You know, typical threaded base on that or whatever. Typical threaded lid. And I've come up with this. I don't want the gear teeth spinning at 2000 RPM and being able to fly out of there, but I also want access to what I'm polishing. So that's that right there. So if I adjust the table enough, I can still you know, I can still get in there and get some level of of <laughs> behind the safety barrier, if you know what I mean. It's not perfect because that's exposed, but that's better than nothing. And I think if something does end up happening, which I'm making sure that it, or trying my absolute best to make sure nothing happens, uh, you know, I think that'll be better than just it flying through the air. I think it'll at least hit something in here or go out through here uh, and lose a lot of the speed that it would have had originally. And this is fairly plastic. This type of plastic is weird. It's, 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 uh, it's delicate, but it's not. Like you can cut it easily. Uh, I was using my Dremel uh, just now, the, the metal cutting wheel. And obviously if that's for metal, that's gonna go right through this. But you know, this, it, it can cut through this easily, but this is fairly sturdy plastic. So, you know, and it's very kind of, it's very flexible. Like, as you can see, like, I can get that lid off without, uh, without the threads, you know? It's an, it's an interesting type of plastic. Uh, I think it'll be okay to use here, I think. I abandoned my original method of going through this table because it's just too, there's, there's not enough room. The lighting's kind of, the lighting sucks, and this is just easier all the way around. And if I put this, like, right there, you know, 
that's all the access in the world that I need to stick a toothpick in there and rub it up against the, the wheel. And also, I don't even need to hold this handle either. So this thing just makes it easier all the way around. And after adding a weight in there, that's just a big piece of steel. Uh, we have got, you know, it, it, it just keeps improving, right? Uh, if this wheel pops off there, it's going to go flying into that and chances are it'll, it'll be damaged. Um, the goal here is to not lose wheels in this thing, you know, have them not go flying off at 2000 RPM. But, you know, accidents happen and I want to be prepared in that particular scenario. This is very jerry-rigged together, but <laughs> we've, we've cooked something up that may or may not work. So that's all the access I need right there. So this is me being creative, guys. This is what I cook up. This still isn't the greatest, though, because this particular wheel, you know, it still moves around independent of the pin vise. And, like, all, all this thing is gripping is the actual pivot wire and nothing else. There's nothing else to grip. Unless you want to grip that whole area there. But I don't think that pin vise is even big enough for that. So, yeah, the pin vise is in, the, is in the chuck. And the wheel's in the chuck of the pin vise. So, but yeah, that's mostly... That's all the access I wanted to get right there. So now what I do is I take the polishing compound. It's mixed up with oil. Uh, here, let me just get this off of here for a second. Uh, yeah, this is what it looks like take a toothpick get it on there that stuff can polish pivots so if i just put that this back on here for a second i'm actually going to show you what i'm going to do here and yeah i hate polishing like a wheel like this i'm thinking this wheel probably needs it so i'm you know it's it's kind of it's a little bit sketchy with that, with how it moves around in the pin vise, most wheels don't do that. It's just kind of these, these ones with longer or with shorter uh, shafts and things like that, if that makes any sense. So it's, it's a bit, it's a bit hard sometimes to know um, what to do in those, in those situations. I don't have a lathe. I'd like to get a lathe, but I don't have one now. So I want to cook stuff up and... <laughs> I'd like to do it without without waiting a long time. Where did my gloves go? I have no idea where my gloves went. They actually found my gloves. And now we can start this up. I'm running it at a pretty fast speed. I'm gonna take this, rub it through there a bit, and we're just gonna go gently along there. all the polishing I need to do. I can just let that sit there, actually. And I, I'm not pressing hard. Oh, there goes the compound. At least it's not super, like... At least it's not super runny. It didn't just go falling off. Now, what you're looking for with these is you're, you want the toothpick to come back, like, black. Because that means it's actually polishing. So, yeah, I'm just running it along the working surface of this. At, a, at over 930 RPM right now. And we're moving fast. I don't know if this is actually polishing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Doesn't look like we're actually polishing. Hmm. I know we were polishing on the on the uh, Dremel. Maybe that's because I was pushing up against the pivot harder, which is not something I want to do really because all this is, you know, there's no other support for this. It's just kind of all all this is. Oh my gosh, it's out of focus. All that's holding it on there right now is just the working surface on the other side and of course when i was polishing the opposite side i could stick that whole part into the into the dremel chuck or in this case i'd stick it more into the pin vise but yeah that sucks but that's not it was like it's caught on there i'll just try and push it up against there lightly i don't want to bend this
gonna let it run for a bit. Oh, there we go. Now it's getting darker. Now we might be actually cooking with fire here. Just gonna have to adjust myself here. Big clump of it there. I'm gonna use that on it. Oh. It's crazy. Crazy stuff, guys. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it up against that. Is it getting darker? I can't tell through the camera right now. It looks like it is, though. Or maybe it's not. I honestly have no idea at the moment. I'm just gonna stick it up. I'm gonna move it up against here somewhere where the working, where the whole surface is being polished at once and not just a little bit at a time. Yeah, this is definitely better than doing it down through the actual table. This is much better. I like this idea more. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if that... We'll test it with my fingernail to see if it actually got smoother or not. I'm very curious to know the results of that. As I've repeated like 400 times, wheels with, you know, all that you can really grab onto with a pin vise or whatever, like uh, like this one. Whoops, let's not get that all in there. This wheel was is a special, I mean, some wheels are, well, actually quite a lot of clock wheels are like this. Um, all I've really got to work with there is just this pivot up in here so if i just take this out actually i'm going to use the uh use the dremel key or not the dremel key the chuck key we can take our pin vise out and we'll see what we did and the fact that we've only got that tiny little area to grip onto with our pin vise is why like that's all that was holding on there so some of you may think that's a more dangerous way of doing it. I don't know how you do that with a lathe without getting the same exact results. You know, because again, you're still grabbing onto that tiny little spot. Unless you're doing the whole wheel, or the whole hub of this wheel, or whatever you want to call that, in the middle there. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. I don't know how exactly that was meant to be done, but I hope that, came, I hope that smoothed out a little bit. These are all kind of a little bit rough. No one serviced this movement, so. Yeah, this the reason why we polish stuff to begin with is usually because either A, it hasn't been serviced in a super long time, or A, it hasn't been served, or B, or B, it hasn't been serviced ever. So that'll rough up wheels if you're not careful. Ooh, that's nice and smooth. Why is this thing, oh, out of focus today? Oh my gosh, okay. There we go. That feels much nicer, even though it didn't quite... Yeah, these, these both feel really nice now. I already polished this guy, hey? Or, sorry, this guy on the, on the side that it was gripping on. I'm just going to take more of that off. This is how I clean wheels most of the time, viewers. Like, after they're done in the Zep or Simple Green or whatever, you know, back in the day when I used to use that, I'd take a piece of paper towel and just take the pivots and take my fingernails and just try and squish the the pivot wire and that would pull off so much dirt and I just spin it back and forth like that. So that would be after it would be done in like the spray nine or simple green or whatever. This is still a great thing. I'm surprised more people don't do this. Maybe it's because of the lint on this. I don't know. Anything coming off now? I don't see anything. Okay. Uh yeah, even though our toothpick showed absolutely no signs of polishing being done, I think it worked. I think it worked. That's still nice and smooth. And that is smooth as well. That's fine. 
that should work with little to no friction, I think. Uh, well, there's always going to be friction, but I think they've just lessened it for sure. I don't have smoothing brooches, guys, so I can't go in the actual pivot holes and smooth stuff out. Not yet, anyway. Otherwise, I might cook that up, but but I, I cannot right now. Where did I, I don't even know where the toothpick even went anymore. Oh, yo Oh, there it is. Got crushed under stuff. Yeah, so there's the toothpick. Yeah, that doesn't look like... And you can't even really see it because, again, we're not focusing. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it doesn't look like much was taken off of that. Uh, this did actually get polished on the Dremel once on this side, but I was not comfortable with... Actually, you know what? That could be cleaned again. See that red in there? We don't want that red stay in there because that's polishing compound that's still there. So this thing will have to be cleaned again, this wheel. But that's okay. That's not hard. But, yeah, just, just a heads up. You definitely don't want to be using these right after you polish them. And then, you know, suddenly the suddenly the bushing gets gets super elongated or something about it, like not even a year later, and you're wondering what the heck happened. Well, that stuff right there. Yeah, that's definitely not made to be in a in a bushing hole. Okay, um, yeah, that was mostly successful. I'm still it's not perfectly smooth on here. And I'm using the fingernail test. Uh, it's pretty smooth though, so I, you know, it doesn't have to be like a like perfect, but um, well, you want it as good as you can get it. I think that's pretty good though. It's definitely better than it was before, so we'll call that a success for now. And the balance wheel, again, we do the same thing again with the rest of these train wheels, and and with these too. So let's get to it, shall we? So now we're gonna try and do our balance wheel here. That's a, nice, that's a more secure surface, or a more uh, secure wheel to do, sorry. So as you can see, we're going, and I'm gonna stick my toothpick in there, and we're gonna see what the heck happens. Yeah, so these, this this wheel here, and I'm only gonna really bother, to, oh, I know what's wrong with this setup. We had to turn the light on. All right, so now we're gonna go the balance wheel route, and we're gonna see what the heck happens here. This should be a more secure wheel to polish. I don't think we'll have it. I don't, I don't think this will be half as difficult as the other one was. So I actually kind of have to kneel down on the floor to see this. Let's see what I'm doing? There we go. That's that's what you want. You can see how I was able to do this in the Dremel, too. You know, it's not my favorite way of doing it, but I definitely prefer this. This works, you know. to start doing that. Oops. Nice. Well, you get the idea, viewers. 